Okay, so this is an example where only one's done. You'd have um, obviously more to it than this. You'd have 16 variants in this in this case. But um, basically, you're dealing with two boards. Number one's always number one. So number one in your case is going to be the same grid layout every time, and you're going to do a different variation for 1A than what you do for 1B over here. So what you're basically doing is you're going to draw right on top of them. Um, you see three here. Basically, I did notice when I was looking at it a little tighter and looking at some printouts that there's some errors going on on the edge conditions on some of these right here. Some of the kind of sharper eye students probably caught it, but definitely didn't email me or anything about it. But that's cool. I'm, you know, that's fine. Well, I'll just make a mental note. But I saw it, and um, just to fix it, what we'll do is we'll just we'll we'll translate that geometry to these two that are fixed up um, over here. And instead of um, starting a new file, this is this is something that's already been worked on a little bit. But in, in reality, you're, you're going to have something like this, and you're going to introduce um, a template file for Project C that is kind of like an appendage or a kind of add-on file to it. You're basically just going to import this file into your existing file. So once you've done your drawings for 3B, you can just insert this file that has some new layers and it has uh, the fixed topo lines on them. And you can basically, when it's all said and done, after you do your drawings, this, these, this is what you're going to be exporting uh, out of Rhino into Illustrator for your new drawings. And those new drawings are going to sit on a new template that just drops on simultaneously on top of it. So you've got the two boards in there. So back to, back to Rhino. Um, I'm going to go and put myself in this situation where basically I've drawn project two. I've got my perimeter lines that are that are surrounding everything. I've got, so those are evidence there. I've got some individual curves and I've got my selected ones as well. Those are all in the same layers as before. So I'm going to use the import command. I'm going to import the new template into this file. It's a decent amount of line work, and I'm, it's going to take a second to drop it all in there. So this is coming in down here. It's got it's under a uh, top layer that's called Drawing C Additions. So this is stuff that you can work on right on top here. And the first thing that I'm going to do after is I'm going to bring over a copy of my selected tiles and my tiles and my perimeter geometry over here, so I can start translating it into the new drawing. So I'm going to select those layers in my existing drawing. And I'm going to right click and then select the objects on those layers right there. And I'm going to copy those over. So the spacing on, on this one is that the, uh, there's an inch gap between the old drawing and the new drawings. So this is going to go 24 inches over. You can snap to that corner. You can just type in 21 or 24 rather. And then there's another one over here that I want to copy to that's a, an inch gap between the two drawings as well. So that's 48 inches over. So I've got my copies over here just for the sake of kind of avoiding any kind of confusion. I'll take this stuff and hide it, get it out of the way. So for the setup with my new drawings, the next step is to start to um, Convert and decide. So I'll, I'll do this. I'll do number one A as an example where I would start to decide on um, what 
clusters I wanted to assign to which typology. So what, uh, which one's going to be my public, which one's going to be my private, or I'm sorry, which one's going to be my support, and then which one's going to be my cycling. So let's say I'll do, I'll, I've decided that this particular one, um, and I'm just dealing with the selected tiles, right? That one is my um, public one. So for my, just for my kind of benefit, I'm, I'm going to change it, my object layer down here. I've got a layer called cluster tiles, and I'm going to change that to um, be on the public one, which is the green color, just to kind of remind myself of what's going on. And I would kind of continue to do that over here. So if I considered that this one was going to be for um, cyclist, I would change it. And I'm just changing the object layer. I can also do it down here in the uh, mini layer editor as well by clicking on the name of the layer that I want it to go to. So this, if this was my support, it would be down there. Once I've done that, I can start to actually draw the paths themselves. So this is when you would reference your, your, your hand drawing. And what I'm kind of shooting for is just straight line polylines right now. Um, and what I'm also going to draw is the splits. So whatever you've drawn, I'm kind of going for like a center line. Um, so if you look on, um, on for instance, uh, the public one, and I say that um, I'm going to bring someone in from here. I'll use this as an example. I'll, I'll, I've got to get onto the site and I've got to get off to the site. So I'm going to go onto the layer for flows that's called public, and I'm going to start drawing it in there. Um, so let's say my hand drawing said that I'm coming in. And with all this information, you're going to be going back and forth a lot between using your object snaps and not. For instance, I just snapped here. The kind of good ones to use are the end, which is going to give you endpoints and near, which is going to guarantee you an intersection. So I'm just using the alt key to kind of toggle them off and on. When I'm actually drawing the path, I don't want to use it. Because um, it'll just start snapping to all this topographic information. But anytime I make any kind of significant turn or anything like that, I'm going to be coming in here. Turn it, I'm hitting alt again to leave it back on and getting off the site. And that looks like an error in the topo, so I'm going to trim it off while I'm here. A bonus job for you there. Okay. We said that these um, split off. So not to say that this is necessarily what you're going to do, but just for the sake of showing you how to draw something like this, I'll create this kind of sweep that goes around to the other end and reconnects just so you can get some kind of information going on. So the important thing here is that I said that says I'm going to split this thing. Um, I, I what I'm going to do when I split it is I'm going to redraw the part that converges on itself. So I'm not going to start here. The, the thing, the easier thing to do in terms of the process later on is to just start back here. So these end snaps will go right to the corners that you already drawn. And I'm, I'm going to overlap it. And if you're getting on too many snaps, you can take that near off and just have it only be right click here and make it only be ends for a while. And you're going to just hit all these ends really well. And then let's say I'm going to split off here, and that's when I'm going to start to go around the other way. I'm going to hold down, take it around. And stop back off here. I'll turn my near snap back on to get an intersection and go there. So you would do this, you'd repeat this process for all three colors and all three types to get the kind of basic skeleton down. Um, next thing you want to do after that is to offset the paths. So this is when you start to give it a bit of a, a, bit of a thickness. Um, when we say we don't want things to be parallel, that's when we kind of were looking at uh, these kind of completed versions that have all these different widths that occur. Um, so you're not going to just automatically get that. You're going to have to just set it up. So you need a little bit more geometry to pull that off. So I'm going to offset these. And what I want to do is because my, uh, my paths split out, they bifurcate out, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to offset to the outside 
And that way, when I look at the completed version, I'll have the same amount that later get split off into different directions. The, the count remains the same. So I don't have it on the green one in this, hand, in this one, but you can kind of see it on this, this pink one here. It's got a total, um, we're using a total of 10 per color. That's the kind of recommendation for this to keep the drawing kind of clean, uh, but also have a decent amount of density information. So if I start with 10, um, how you split that is going to be a function of um, your initial hand drawing. Like how do you, what do you see in terms of density for your circulation? And then also any kind of like changes you might notice once you start drawing it digitally uh, from a graphic kind of standpoint. So I'm just going to use the offset command for my curves. I'm going to use a distance of 0.1 and pick my curve and I'm offsetting that one to the outside. And then I'm also going to offset this curve to the outside as well. What that'll do is that'll, that'll create some um, new lines and they're going to have a different kind of kind of dip situation when you offset. So for instance, just the way that these were drawn, these are extending, these are overextending into it. So I could just use the trim command to kind of clean that up really quick. I'm going to use the trim command. This is my cutting object, my curve here, and I'm just going to trim off these two. Um, conversely, if they were running up short, I could use the extend command and it works the same way. I pick that as a boundary object, I hit enter, and then I click on the end of the curve and it would extend out and intersect it and stop it. And you'll end up, you'll end up using both of them actually on this one. Um, so this is when I start to actually use also the topography as information because what I can start to do is I can turn on my control points and start giving these different widths. So this is when the idea about not having parallel lines kind of forcing a kind of condition where you've got to have changes in the flow. Also, so here's a good example where I can trim it up right now. So I'll use the trim and I'll use the extend as well. So I'm going to trim that off and I'll use the extend. This is a good boundary object and it'll take the nearest end and extend it out to it. Okay, so I was saying, looks like right here I missed a gap or a control point and it's not quite lined up so I'm going to turn on my control points and realize that I've got an extra control point in here. It's a kind of faint one so I'm going to delete it. If it was more substantial I could add a control point. So you guys know how to delete things. Obviously you would grab this control point and delete it. Since you know how to delete it I'll show you that you can also go in here in your menu and add a control point as well. So I've added that control point and I'm going to move it over to intersect that curve so that these things are actually on top of each other. That's a good mistake to kind of point out. So now I want to edit this thing. Um, what I can do is turn on the control points for all these objects that I've got. And Again, since I didn't give another, I've got another kink that I want to kind of line up here. I want to use that insert control point down here as well. And add one. And now I can turn it. This can get moved now just by grabbing it. If I use the near snap, it stays on the original curve. And there's a couple of ways you can start to manage these. The, the simplest one is when you've got a condition like this and you want to just make it wider, you grab the control point. If the gumball is getting in your way, you can take it off down at the bottom here. Just depends on your kind of comfort mode. So that's, I'm kind of going in here and I'm gradually making things wider. I'm making things more narrow. I'm changing the angles. But the good thing is because the offset, I have matching endpoints. So I'm not going to have a condition where I, it's kind of goofy and I can't manage the width of it because I've always got a set. The other way that you can make things wider is you can grab um, more than one and with the gumball on you can use the scale command to make things wider. Um, right now they're not aligned really well so I could tell the gumball to align to the object. If that doesn't work I can relocate the gumball and tell it to go from here to here and say accept on that 
and I can also just rotate the gumball as well by holding down control and rotating. When I hold down control, I'm rotating the gumball, not the object. So now when I grab those things, I can just rotate it, line that blue up like that, and then use the scale to make it wider. And that's happening symmetrically from the center point, so I can make it wider that way as well. This for sure could use some size to it. So I'll use the gumball for that too. If I hold down shift, I can make it universal with. So let's say I reach a point where I'm happy with it. Make it a little wider here. And these are the widths that I want to use. Um, at that point, once I've kind of decided that, it's just a, a kind of re-editing of the line weights. So at that point, you could also take off your topo lines uh, in your in your model, um, right there, to get a, get a kind of clear view of it. And you can also take off your um, your selected tiles for a second as well, just your tiles in general and the perimeters, so I can focus on the line work as well. So you can imagine if all of these are done. Um, the next thing I want to do is to create the um, in-between curves to create the flow part of the drawing. Before I do that, what I want to do is I want to get rid of, um, actually, it will make a little sense if I do that after the fact. Let me, let me, let me do the between curves now. So let's say that um, I want a total of 10, and I've decided that these are pretty, this is a pretty equal distribution in terms of my flow. So I'm going to have a total of five curves going in the left direction and five curves going in the right direction. So I'm going to use the curve uh, tool called tween curves. I'm going to pick my start and end curves. So in this case, I'm going to pick these two. That's a set. I'm going to make my active layer the, the uh, flows for public. And in between, I'm going to give five because I want to have um, three that are happening in between here and then the two outside original ones I'm counting as well. There's an option here for match method. Um, I'm going to leave it alone and say none. It works really well for one degree curves and so say no match method and it creates those curves. And we're going to do the same thing um, on the other side. This time my start and end curves are this one and this one. All right. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to soften these curves up so I can uh, do uh, fillet corners. Fillet corners is going to give the same fillet radius for every curve in there. So I'm going to grab my new curves and I'm going to do curve fillet corners. And the radius I'm going to use on that is actually the same value as my offset. It's 0.1. So I'm going to use 0.1. And that's going to give me a little bit of a smoother kind of drawing and not be so kind of dead set on the corners as geometry. So right now that kind of from a visual image is good to go. But what the, the one thing that's going to go on right now is that we still have this condition in Rhino. It looks good because it's the, it's a curve that's overlapping identically. Right. You did the same things both times to it. But if you bring it into Illustrator and we're going to use the multiply on it, it's going to be darker than all your other green stuff. So what you want to do is you want to get rid of the redundant uh, curve that's in there, that overlaying element that's in there right now. So what you can do to do that is you can run the intersect command. So if I go to curve, um, curve from objects, it's in there, intersection. And my objects to intersect are the two overlapping curves. So it's this one and then the other one. I'm going to hit enter. And what that does is it draws a curve that is the intersection of both curves. And the reason why that's important is because I can extract the points, the start and end points from this curve and split it. And I can split the uh, curve right down there. I'm waiting for this guy to auto save. You don't want to eyeball it because you don't know kind of mathematically where these things are actually intersecting. Um, 
and you're going to get like a little dark components in your drawing. Fast forward. This is when you're fast forwarding at home. There we go. No, oh, yeah. So this is my new intersection line. I'm going to extract the points from there. Uh, control points. Hmm. I know the command itself is extract points, so I'll type that in. Extract PT. Give me all these. What I want to actually do is split right here. This is seven. That's the end point of that intersection curve. And after this, these go onto new curves. So I can say split. Select object to split. I just need to split one of them. I'll leave the other one to be there. I can say point. Point to split curve is this one right here. It's an end point, but if I didn't have that end snap on, it would also work with the point snap. And now that's split that curve out. So what I've got now is that curve I can get rid of. The one that made the intersection, I've got one that I split, this short one here, get rid of that. And now I just have a single curve on it up the middle that's not going to overlay anything else. And you can basically do this process the same. You want to do it like, you know, mass production. You run this process for all three colors. And then when you're all said and done, you can type in SELPT to select all the points and just delete them because after that you don't need those points. Now you've got this done in three colors. You've got it done for, let's say, all your drawings. You're, t you're ready to export it and get it into Illustrator. So I'm going to turn back on the stuff that we need to get out of there. We need our site, uh, the new updated line drawing. We need um, the perimeter. We want the tiles as well. So this is what we're going to get out of here. Again, we're not going to change the scale. We want everything to be one to one. And I can close that template out. I'm not using that anymore. So taking another look at this while we're waiting on the export, this has the controlling inventions in there. They're basically the same as before. It should be pretty short work for you. The thing that, that basically changed is that the cluster tiles have different graphic conventions now. Instead of just being all outlined uh, or filled in with the dark gray, they're filled in with their own specific colors. Those have been added to the swatches menu here. So you've got the, the green, the cyan, and the magenta as well. So it looks like that export went out okay. So I'm going to copy this to my clipboard, check my paste remembers layers option here, paste it in. Treating as one drawing always, so we only have to do it one time. 
we'll have this stuff in there. I've got one color going on, but you would have more than that. Just kind of, just as a reminder on some of the kind of layering and stuff that happens here. You just want to make sure that your stuff's coming up in the right order. All my drawing stuff right now popped up top here. So that's when you start to see things like overlapping on the labels and stuff like that. So I'm going to take that stuff. I want to put it down at the bottom layer so that it, it, the white part occludes it. Also, because we've got these little curves that came from your drawing, the little outlines, those will get covered up by the, the darker border that's going around here. It's a little bit thicker, so that'll go away too. So you shouldn't have any kind of doubling up or happening or anything like that. It's, it's, a, it's a matter of the layers. So fortunately, because we're kind of using um, um, a, a universal color, if you use this convention, um, if you put things on the right layer here, these RGB colors translate to the same color in the CMYK space in terms of the cyan and the magenta. Um, when it comes to the green, it's a little different, so you will have to check on that one. I would check on all of them just to be careful, uh, but you will have to kind of check on that one as well. But in order to fill that out, you're going you're gonna to have your layers here, and you're going to select. Um, in this case, I've got my cluster tiles for the public which is that. I'm going to change that to be a fill green. The fill's got the multiply on it. That's important so we can see not only the topo lines, but we can also see the other things that pass underneath it. It's going to get pretty busy on these drawings. And it still has the, um, the cluster tile still has the black 0.5 stroke around it as well. So I'm going to change that stroke to be 0.5 black. That's good. And then I'm going to go and change my stroke for my flows on the public this in this case that's the ones we have you can see that that's like this standard kind of random green color that's coming out of rhino so i'm going to go to my swatches and change the stroke to be lime green and make sure you also give yourself a multiply on that as well that's a one point stroke it should be coming in at one point so you should be able to leave it alone and not have to and not have to change it. You should be seeing some kind of density that's coming into that as well. Okay, so the other stuff is is kind of per the standard when we talk about um, the assignments happening up there. We just got to give you the kind of stuff that's coming in. So the perimeters, right? It's a two point black stroke. Just making sure it's the all black color or the true black color. I've got the regular tiles. Not seeing them right now. Ah, looks like I didn't import them. So going back here, one thing that I did is I had this guy locked by mistake and I didn't bring him in. So don't be like me, bring your regular tiles in. Mental note, they should be there as well. They're gonna help you kind of have a frame of reference on it. And those are gonna come in and those are still gonna be your, your uh, the same size for the stroke. Those are gonna be the 0.5 black stroke. So. The missing element on that is my unselected tiles. They should still be there, and then my other colors. But in terms of the drawing, it's set. This kind of guide is replacing it, so letting us know that this is the A variance and everything else, and this is your standard uh, setup on that. And that's basically ready to go at that point. Yeah. It does. Any questions on that? Yeah. Mm hmm. So, like in the handout, 
it says that you're going to probably split some of them off and have like multiple colors in terms of you might have two greens, you might have two blues, stuff like that. Good? Yeah? Okay. That's all I got for you guys.